A new art exhibit unveiled here in New York City on Friday. It's a monument to Nellie Bly, regarded by many as America's first investigative journalist. Through her trailblazing career, she uncovered abuse and injustice and gave voice to the voiceless. The installation is not far from the scene of one of her greatest triumphs, and it's created by a sculptor trying to address an imbalance in our public art. Christina Ruffini has the story. On the northmost end of Roosevelt Island, a sliver of soil between Manhattan and Queens, Nellie Bly keeps watch. It is a puzzle. It's the girl puzzle. I want people to experience it as a puzzle, to walk through, see the reflections of the faces, see the puzzle pieces of the faces. These seven-foot faces are the creation of sculptor Amanda Matthews, a tribute to Bly, an investigative journalist who became one of the island's most famous and fearless residents. She didn't just try to read about and understand people who exist in the margins. She put herself in those same physically situations. At risk. Yes, physically at risk, emotionally at risk. In 1887, Bly went undercover as an inmate at the island's asylum. Her report, 10 Days in a Madhouse, revealed the deplorable treatment of women in the facility, prompting outrage and reform. I knew that Nellie Bly was such a larger than life figure that we needed to do something larger than life. That's and not, pretty big. It's pretty big, yes. <laughs> Progressively larger spheres reflect the impact of her reporting, as well as the faces of four other women from diverse or marginalized communities. The more I read of her work, the more I could not separate it from women I know. And I thought, how timely this work was and still is. This installation is one of only a handful of public monuments in the United States depicting women. The faces took 18 months to make at Matthew's studio in Kentucky, where a few years ago, she made a startling statue-related discovery. The only sculpture honoring a female on public owned land in the state of Kentucky was a Confederate general's horse. The horse? Yes, and I literally burst into tears. They were angry tears. I was mad about that. But next year, after a lot of lobbying, her sculpture of educator Nettie Depp will be installed at the state capitol. Women's history didn't show up in our history books the same as men. It's not written down as much. It's not portrayed as much. So we have to reach back into history, find this information, bring it into the 21st century. Let's give a warm welcome to Shelton Haynes. That's something Shelton Haynes, the head of the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation, also supports. Why honoring women? You know, there's so many women that contributed so many different things that were underrepresented. And as you can see here, it shows that diverse background. It shows their contributions. The faces surrounding Bly, young and old, Asian and African American, are all women Matthews knows personally. Like 98-year-old Miyoko Chambliss, who at age 18 was sent to a Japanese internment camp. When Nellie Bly said, I saw the look of distress on my companions' faces as we came closer to the island and saw the long stone buildings, I couldn't see anything else other than the pictures Miyoko had shown me. Matthew's two daughters are also depicted, including Natalie Fields. So your face behind you looks a little different. My face is aged forward because not only are women rarely recognized in sculpture, but older women are hardly ever recognized in sculpture. And I'm part of the queer community, and you don't see representation of older queer women. The back of the sculptures are engraved with a quote from Bly's writings that inspired the selection of each subject. The quote is, while I live, I hope. Luckily for me, this quote is very short. I happen to have it tattooed on my inner arm. Luckily, it fit in just the five words. But I want people in my community to know that someone out there is speaking for them, is trying their hardest to represent a little bit of our community. And that's something that I've never seen and didn't expect to see in my lifetime. The face of female resilience is represented by Kusha Bacon Brown. Growing up, did you ever see a sculpture, a public work that made you think of your life or yourself at all? Not, not ever. She overcame tragedy after the death of her infant daughter. 
This installation is spiritual. It's not just spaces. It's not just concrete and bronze. It's a spirit of, of love, a spirit of peace. There's hope here. And um, I just want everyone to respect it. So while these women never met Nellie Bly, they can see themselves in her words. Conversations about lived experiences, about intersectionality, about where we belong and in what categories other people see us and in what categories we see ourselves needs to be part of that nuanced discussion about where do women fit in and where are these new spaces where we can now inhabit. Roosevelt Island seems to be one of them. Seems to be. For CBS Saturday Morning, Christina Ruffini, New York. Love everything about that installation. And it, it, we talk about this so often, but it's raising that awareness of stories you do not know of marginalized communities, mm -hmm. period. And representation matters yes. to see them talk about her age forward and celebrating that too. It's very important. The sculptures are stri stunning. striking. Yeah. They really are, yeah. yeah.